All who thirst for freedom may come with us. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 21 of Exodus Americanus. I'm your uh, main host, I guess, uh, Stone. I like to steal all the credit. With me, as always, is uh, Roscoe, and we have uh, our first special guest ever, uh, Donald Bateman, from his Twitter, at Nationalism Rise. How are you guys doing tonight? I'm doing fantastic. Doing fantastic. Doing good, guys. Good deal. Hey, we're glad to have you, Mr. Donald. Uh, it was kind of a spur-of-the-moment thing just on Friday night. We're like... Order your fucking mic and we'll be on the show on Sunday. <laughs> oh, yeah. So. It was a good stuff. Yeah, good. hopefully this won't just be a one-time thing. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm down to down to shit posts whenever. Good deal. Build this motherfucking thing. It. Fight the rising brown tide. Indeed. So uh, Donald's got his, uh, he just launched his uh, little blog slash website today, his I believe. Uh, nationalism. Motherfucker, that thing got over 100 hits in the first couple hours. Little blog. Oh yeah, Fuck approaching yeah. Brightport numbers already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to give him a plug, and you're just you're giving me shit. <laughs> it's uh, nationalismrise.blogspot.com. So if you want to check out his uh, first article, um, it, I read it. It was pretty damn good. So, but what do we want to we want to start off with? We want to start off with uh, you know the big thing, or do we want to start off with some shit posting oh, or some lighthearted shit posting? Because by the- hey, before we get into the the news, the happening. It. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm sure everybody's on pins and needles to find out what happened on this podcast that'll uh, <laughs> drop like 48 hours after a bunch of fags got murdered. <laughs> 48 hours? Fuck. Not even 24 Not yet. yet. Never forget. <laughs> <laughs> you know, before we get too far, there is... Ah, co- uh, geez. This is... Um, I don't want to say this is the silver lining, but it's all about narratives and narrative control. So I don't feel too bad pointing this out. This is now the deadliest mass shooting in the United States history. I know it's Joe. And I'm kind of happy that that uh, prestigious title is being held by a non-white. Yeah, and the victims are a bunch of gay Latinos. We, we can lose a few. Well, who was the uh, the previous record holder? Wasn't it the uh, Virginia Tech dude? Uh, was it Columbine? Or maybe Virginia Tech. No. Virginia Tech was way worse than Columbine. Yeah, it was an Asian doing it. They're efficient. <laughs> well, I mean, they're still never going to get, uh, what was it, Brevik's numbers over in Norway. Oh, yeah, he's a, he's a monster. He was great. Somehow... I don't, I don't understand why, but when I imagine Brevik doing it, he's killing all those people with a bow and arrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, number two was uh, Virginia Tech. It was 32 people, so, you know, he, this uh, Orlando almost doubled it. Jesus. Um, Brevik kind of looks like a young Putin. I just Googled his face again. He does. He does. It might be like his, his looks beard like, avatar. He looks like a neckbeard uh, Putin. Yeah, basically. I'd like to see Putin with a beard. Well, isn't a life sentence in Sweden like 25 years? Yeah, he's going to get out and do it again. <laughs> he's going to get out, and he's going to be basically the fucking Donald Trump of Sweden. He just won a, uh, a lawsuit. or so, like, I don't know if it was a lawsuit, but he oh, won his like, case. That, yeah. He wanted more humane treatment in prison. Yeah, he wanted, he wanted more video games. <laughs> they wouldn't let him play video games, whatever he Motherfucker, wanted. Motherfucker, so. they had him playing a goddamn PlayStation 2. He <laughs> lives in a first world nation. He deserves an Xbox One. At least. And the kill streak he got <laughs> but, off that, he has like unlimited nukes now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, He's Jesus. a big stone. That's Easy. awesome. Uh, that got me right in, right in, the, right in the feels. But the good right feels. The good feels. See, and that's, uh, that's one of the things that I really, um, now that we have Mr. Bateman here with us, it's not necessarily a format change that we're looking at, but we're wanting to uh, wanting to look more at uh, at bros, like you know, like for for guys like us, it's not really hard to make friends with a guy because we had dads to show us what a healthy male relationship looks like. Yeah, there's a lot of dudes who have no idea what it's like, you know, to 
to love your bro and not be a fucking fag. It's true. It's a fine line. <laughs> <laughs> There's a fine line between being gay and holding hands in line at Taco Bell. Yeah. <laughs> Never want to go full Rubio. Yeah. No. So, oh, shit. the question that I was getting ready to ask uh, Mr. Bateman right before we uh, started recording, like, I know exactly, like, what made me say, fuck it. Like, I have to do a podcast. I got to do something. Like, I got, I've got to get in the fight. Like, yeah. what was the, what was it that made you say, fuck, you know, time to get in and start swinging? Yeah. So for me, um, I grew up in Houston, which is basically the most, you know, vibrant city in America right now. Oh. It's actually, it's past New York City in diversity. Tragic. Dear God. It's also the most air-conditioned city. Yeah, that, that part's great. Um, well, what was that? basically, uh... yeah, for me, it was basically, it was always implicit. I knew these things. Like, for instance, my dad went to a high school where he was, like, in the 1% of white people. And it was just all dindus. Jesus so, Christ. Yeah, so he, he raised me with the knowledge that, you know, they're not like us. You know, you don't want to be with them. It's bad. So I, I always knew it. Um, I went to a pretty diverse middle school and then escaped to, like, a, a really nice white high school. And you can just notice the difference immediately. And so I, I always knew implicitly. Um, but politically, I went through a kind of a, a super anti-Bush phase. Because I've, I've always been very into politics, and I just saw all those disasters, you know, the Iraq War, financial meltdown. You know, well, I, w I think was, being critical of W yeah. is – I think that's more or less being critical of basically the pants on head retarded oh, yeah. Henry Kissinger foreign policy that we've had since fucking Hinkley shot Reagan. Yeah. I mean his priorities were wasting trillions in the Middle East and getting immigration reform. And luckily, he only got one of those done. Oof. Yeah. Like so, only... yeah. So, so after that, um, I kind of transitioned. I went through a brief libertarian phase when I discovered weed. Um, <laughs> that, only, that only lasted a few months. And then I kind of went into... When, when, your, your, when your dealer got busted? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then I kind of went into a more... I don't know, it wasn't really defined, because that was right when I was starting college. Um so I've always been kind of more of a pragmatist, um, you know, focus on amassing power, of course. So I was kind of agnostic to politics for a couple of years, but it was really the Trump rise that really kind of woke me up to everything. Because, um, you know, I've always been against illegal immigration, all that kind of stuff. But just seeing how bad it's got, like seeing Houston transform into a third world city, that's, that's what really spurred it on. And then how I found the movement... Um, I remember right when the Trump rise happened, they're writing all these articles about, you know, the white nationalists gaining traction off Trump. <laughs> so I was like, okay, that's interesting. I'll check it out. So I'd read this, like, you know, a Huffington Post article where it talks about Richard Spencer and Jared Taylor. And then I started reading their stuff, and I was like, okay, this makes way more sense than anything on the mainstream media. And then There's from there... that the... I've said a thousand fucking times mm -hmm. on... Um... I'm a huge fan of The Daily Show. That's one of my fucking highlights of the week. Yeah. But on one of their first shows, Seventh Sunset, all these people, you know, like like me, like Mr. Stone, you know, like like Donald Bateman, we don't disagree with these arguments of, you know, Kevin McDonald, Richard Spencer, Jared Taylor. We just haven't been allowed to hear them. Yeah. Because they're blacklisted from, you know, everywhere. Like... The the kind of conversations that I had before I got involved in the art right were the kind of things that just made me want to slam my head in a car door about twenty or thirty fucking times. Mm -hmm. The amount of intellectual, just I don't want to say gravitas, but it's staggering just how many smart dudes and how much momentum is on our side right now. Yeah, and it's it's hard not to sound smart when you actually have the facts on your side, when you don't have to build a false narrative just to get your point across. Yeah, I've been arguing with a with a uh, gay on uh, Facebook. Who, uh, <laughs> let That's me, a uh, big mistake. Yeah. Well, I guess it's not really arguing just because I've uh, made it a point to call him an intellectual and moral coward. <laughs> <laughs> 
But the uh, post was, I don't know who I should be more afraid of. Gun nuts or rapist? Hashtag sad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I would right. say probably rapists. Right? So, all right, motherfucker. If uh, we take the idea gun nut, I guess an NRA member could be considered a gun nut. Let's look at some fucking crime statistics for NRA members. What's oh, that? It's so low. Yeah. If uh, everyone committed crimes as low as the rate that uh, NRA members do or uh, concealed carry holders, we well, you wouldn't... know, you know why they don't commit crime? It's because they're white. Mm. <laughs> like I saw this graph. It was like the U.S. crime stats, and then it removed it, and it was like U.S. crime stats with only white people, and it was like lower than all these European countries. It's insane. Mm -hmm. That's. My my trip down the rabbit hole, like, I fought it kicking and screaming every step of the way. Because unlike you, I wasn't exposed to it at a young age. I yeah. literally went to went to school with no minorities, all white kids. Mm. Like, nothing but Scotch-Irish trash as far as the fucking eye could see. <laughs> like the the eternal time, potato. Yeah, like, the only time that I ever saw, like, black kids was in playoff football or regional track meets. They're good at track. And... Shit. Not when I was on the fucking track. <laughs> you put me up against any of the uh, the black kids that I ran against in high school in the 400. Yeah. It was a bloodletting. Mm. A bloodblast. <laughs> so funny thing about blacks in high school sports. Um, so I did wrestling in high school. And I, I went against probably like three or four blacks in my career. Undefeated record. Because the thing about them... With wrestling, it's not really about raw strength or power. It's all about technique. And so you'd get one of them. You know, he'd be twice as strong as me, faster. But he had no idea what to actually do. Like so a they little would bit just of understanding run at you. of leverage? Yeah, so they just run at you like a rhino. You just kind of take their momentum with you and just turn. And then they're just lying on their back, you know, like a fucking idiot. Like Steven Seagal. Yeah, basically. So, so yeah. undefeated can... against blacks. Let me uh, let me share a quick little <laughs> anecdote with you. It, it's going to be like the race word. <laughs> oh, I'm so ready for it. <laughs> I'm a freshman at a, uh, you know, I'm a freshman at a, a pretty prominent small, like the uh, smallest division of uh, high school football in the state yeah. that I, uh, smallest one. And I'm a freshman. We uh, have a scrimmage at football camp. The uh, reigning you know, next division up as far as size above us. Can't find anyone that'll line up against him hmm. for a, a little bit of scrimmaging. And my coach has uh, never turned down any kind of a challenge ever. Yeah. So they got all these black kids, and I can't get... I, there's nothing that I can say to you to, to detail just how Scotch-Irish trash all these guys were. <laughs> We're on defense the first series, and a guy that I've looked up to, still do, is playing uh, outside linebacker. You know, their first uh, their first play is this uh, little uh, quick pitch to this uh, tiny little uh, black guy out of the backfield. Our outside linebacker scrapes, goes straight through the uh, pulling guard, and crushes this kid in the backfield <laughs> and says, Not today, nigger. <laughs> <laughs> And that kid, his response, no one had ever talked to him like that before in his life. Yeah. So they're breaking up fights. But that was uh, that was pretty common. So we ended See, up getting a huge, you know, just because we got in their heads like that. Yeah. Owned him. Owned him. Mm -hmm. you know, did, I've not seen anybody get owned that hard since the uh, fucking Emancipation Proclamation. <laughs> My, our uh, our defensive back coach, he's uh, he was a younger guy. He's standing there sort of uh, shit-talking a little bit to us and says, I'll tell you what, guys. You know, for a long time, you know, and he sort of talked about how the uh, breeding of slaves in the South had bred a, a bigger and stronger black. It's true. Yep. And he said, now they've got air conditioning, too. <laughs> and they're able to get hand-me-down PlayStation 1s, you know, from... You know, from the thrift store or whatever. Or just steal them. And white athletes are closing the gap. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's true because if you look at Africa proper, you don't see these, you know, six foot six LeBron Jameses around there. It no. doesn't happen. 
Well, I mean, the best before he got hurt, uh, Jordy Nelson was the best downfield uh, threat in uh, football. Yeah, then Zog got him. <laughs> Zog must have got Aaron Hernandez, too. <laughs> Zog got Aaron Hernandez because that motherfucker was on my uh, fantasy football team two years in a row. You know, I heard Aaron Hernandez didn't actually shoot him. It was Sam Hyde. That's yeah, true. Framed. It's true. <laughs> Fucking madman. Oh, God. So did you go to, like, a super small high school? Like, what was your graduating class? Graduating class of 63 kids. My God. Mine was 850. Motherfucker. Mine was, like, two sixty, two seventy five. 275. See, like, I think those kind of, like, those areas that are, you know, the all-white high schools, those are all the states that cucked for crews. If you look at the map. Mine didn't. That's true. I mean, that's the good thing about the Deep South. They have enough uh, red pilling to go with Trump. But if you look at all those Mountain West, Corn Belt, bullshit states. Illinois, what... Missouri. Oh, no. Trump got Illinois, barely, but he got oh, Illinois. Shit. It's because of the Chicago riot. Yep. Mm -hmm. And because blacks can't vote in Illinois because they're all felons. <laughs> or dead. <laughs> No, it's like Chicago is about to become only the fourth largest city and Houston the third because, you know, all the whites are moving out because they're scared and all the blacks are genociding each other. Uh, I know, I can't, it's going to be a hot summer and I can't wait. Hot summers are the best summers. Right? It's The best is that it's Barack's hometown and, like, he never mentions any bad things that happen there because it's just, you know, there's no narrative to pull from there. Ah. Uh. Isn't it nice seeing that piece of shit lose control of narratives? Oh, yeah. Well, and especially, it's his old guy, Rahm Emanuel, is the mayor now. And all the Dindus have rioted against him. So, <laughs> Zog yeah. has lost his greatest ally. <laughs> See, that, that's people who you know, tried to t have tried to tell me before. Say, oh, well, America and Israel aren't as close as they used to be because of Barack Obama. That motherfucker, Rahm Emanuel <laughs> was his chief of staff and yeah. hired everybody that fucking works for Obama. Mm -hmm. Like, that motherfucker served in the Israeli army. I mean, his top donor was Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs. Right. Be yeah, we, we don't have that echo effect. We're not that fancy. <laughs> yeah, it's assumed. <laughs> we're not we're not seven son and, like, do this shit for a living. I don't know what he does for a living, but he knows his shit. They got all those t-shirt shackles. <laughs> yeah. I was so fucking mad when I couldn't get my coincidence shirt. Me too. My heart was broken. It was funny. I was meeting some uh, fellow goys in Houston, and I wanted to wear my Trump hat, you know, to the meeting. But then they picked a Mexican restaurant, and I was like, oh, can't do it. <laughs> yeah, you'll get, like, rat poison <laughs> yeah. in your, uh, your enchilada. At best, my food would get, like, pissed in. So you went to, you went to a real pool party? Yeah, it was, it was good times. They both had uh, fashy haircuts, and I need to get on that level. Oh, man. That's something I've been working towards, like, the last few months. Mm -hmm. Well, hell, almost a year now I've been uh, trying to get so I get my hair long enough to do an honest-to-God Dick Spencer undercut. Yeah. See, I keep my hair pretty short, so I can't... I don't know if I can really pull it off. Well, I am a uh, a former Army guy, and this is the pretty much the first time I've not more or less had a shaved head mm -hmm. since about 1998. <laughs> wow. That? See, my dad, like, he started the balding thing, and then he was just like, fuck it, went, you know, full skinhead. All right. I respect well, it. Hey, if I ever start going bald, that's the direction I'm going to go. Oh, yeah, I mean, balding men just look like cucks. You know, even if they aren't, they become it because of the balding. You got to accept it, otherwise you get consumed by the cuckiness. You just got to show the rest of it. <laughs> that way you look like you're famous. And also, you look like every bad guy in a movie. It's always like a shaved head white guy. Oh, God. Because they're the only people with any agency to actually like build these criminal empires. <laughs> yeah. I everything was watching... else, yeah, everything watch, else uh... becomes like a, a gang fight in Chicago. I was watching uh, fucking Ant-Man. It's the first Marvel movie that I've not made it to the end of. That's the only one I haven't seen. It was really fucking boring. Yeah, but I liked it. The Indian is really good. You just you missed it. 
you missed the like climactic final scene. What well, doesn't it have a uh, Russo from House of Cards? I like that guy. Yeah, he's the bad guy. Talking yeah. about uh, shaved head white dudes. Yeah. I don't know who that is. Oh, you gotta watch House of Cards. It's, it's good stuff. I couldn't. The guy ain't got time after, for that. After um, the Secret Service agent and uh, shit. Who does uh, Meacham? After Meacham and a what's his name spit roasted as the uh, first lady. Oh yeah, the three chim. Yeah. <laughs> that was it for me, fam. I had to tap out. Well, the the cool thing about House of Cards is the creators. They were both worked <laughs> on the Clinton staff in the nineties. So it's House of Cards is just House of Clinton. It's a, it's an autobiography or biography. Well, instead of two dudes spit roasting Clinton, it was definitely uh, two chicks. Yeah, Huma. Ah. <laughs> uh. Did y'all know Huma used to be like a babe like twenty years ago? I saw a picture. I did not. I cannot imagine her being attractive. I guarantee you that her vagina has an unappealing smell. Yeah, I mean, she's married to but, Anthony Weiner. Weiner. As I was saying, it probably smells like Weiner. <laughs> oh, I found, so the, I found the pic. I'm going to send it in the chat. Yes. All right. This is what our audience loves when we uh, send each other funny inside jokes. Well, they can <laughs> they can just Google Huma Abedin Young. <laughs> Shit, I'm going to have to Google that. He's sending it. It's there. I don't want to wait that long. Oh, shit. Motherfucker. Like, not bad. No. Kind of a babe. I'll be honest, I've probably frogged worse. I mean, Hillary can get the best, you know. She's got the money. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, that is... That is unfortunate. Crazy thing about Huma, like, her parents are literally, like... Top level Muslim Brotherhood operatives. That and that sounds like fucking conspiracy theory shit, right? Yeah, but it, it, it's it's real shit. And then she's married to Anthony Weiner, <laughs> the disgraced Jew congressman of New York. <laughs> I want to. I kind of want to watch that documentary that they did on him when he was running for uh, mayor. Oh, that was so sad. He just, like, assumed everyone would just let it slide, and they were like, no, you fucked up, man. Well, one of the things I remember from that time was some, like, like there were a group of Orthodox Jews. I saw this video that were screaming at him for marrying a non-Jew. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Have you well, all some stats? It was, like, I think 58% of Jews intermarry. So they're showing themselves now. Well, they're either showing it, like, it's either, you know, like, the the regular Jews are showing mm -hmm. themselves, and the Orthodox Jews are getting so goddamn inbred that, uh... <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, they have the highest birth rate of any ethnic group, so they're going to be around for a while. Ah. <sighs> Gross. Uh, nice, uh, so going to be sliding out of the womb with 11 toes. <laughs> I mean, there's going to be a lot... There there's going to be more mongoloids and there's going to be a uh, 11 toed well the good thing about Jewesses running around the good around. thing about orthodox Jews they look so weird they can't blend in and become hollywood action stars like it's just not even feasible like they can sneak a Seth Rogen in but i mean you look at some of these orthodox ones and it's just disgusting i had to mute myself during that because I laughed so hard that I've got a uh, Hillary Clinton-style coughing fit. <laughs> Oof. Have you all seen the gif where it's like she's clearing the bong and then just keeps coughing? <laughs> no, no, but I need to. I'll pull it up. And this is what both of our listeners tune in for. <laughs> hey, dude, we had, as of like an hour ago, we had over 116 listens on our last episode. I think that's pretty damn good. Well, Triple digits. I was talking to my incubator. Yeah. That's what I call my wife because she's carrying, hopefully, one <laughs> of the future dictators of mankind. But <laughs> I was talking to the incubator. About a year ago, Mike Enoch said on TRS, he said, get in the fight, do a podcast. And I didn't do it right off the bat. You know, sort of to, to circle back to what we started with. The thing that told me that I have to get in and start fighting was a Rotherham. Like it wasn't until 
I saw the links that the liberals over there went to to protect the rapist of white children, of little white girls. To protect the, the links that they went to to protect little white rapists is what taught me to hate liberals. Yeah. Like, until until then, you know, I was willing to think of them, oh, they're misguided, oh, they're naive. Like, no, mm-hmm. they're fucking evil. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I always thought they were just kind of dumb and degenerate, but well, once they I are woke. They're that too, but yeah, I mean, from the sounds of it, both of us were having a hard time of getting getting to the bottom line of the spreadsheet and seeing that they're fucking evil. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's kind of a uh, like for me, I was pretty isolated. I didn't work in a uh, industry where I would encounter anybody else that was even the slightest bit red pilled. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Stone and I went to a college together like a hundred, hundred and fifty years ago. Yeah, something around there. And I think it was it Trump shit posting that really reconnected us. Yeah. No um, fuck, dude. I we... think uh, I think it was uh, one of those dindus that uh, Black Lives Matter tried to deify. Was it Michael Brown? I think it might it might have been Trump because it was right around it was like the beginning of July and of June when we really started. Uh, so it's been about a year, I guess. Because I guess I think Trump announced his candidacy, candidacy on like June twenty fifth or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then like you know, a week after that, a couple weeks after that is when we you know started chat. Like you would post something on Facebook or I'd posted something, and then you know that's when we jumped down the rabbit hole. See, the best thing so about Trump's announcement. Um, cause I was following it. I was following the, the election since, you know, Cruz got in, like since the first person got in, cause you know, I, I love politics. Um, and I started hearing rumors that Trump might get in and I was like, okay, like we'll see how this goes out. And the best thing is he announced he was running literally the day after Jeb Bush, ah, <laughs> uh. just to like steal all of Jeb's thunder. It's, it's glorious. There was some, a, a Twitter post I saw that said like by 2025, when uh, Trump is ending his second term, we'll have experienced nearly a je- nearly a decade of Jeb bullying. Yeah. Well, he's still doing it. Like, he was at a rally in Tampa, and he was basically, you know, doing his talk, and he was saying, you know, I wonder if, I wonder if Jeb will endorse me. Real low-energy guy. And then he was like, uh, who the hell cares? I don't want it. <laughs> yeah. It's perfect. One of the things that I always bring up when I talk to the fucking cucks that I work with is that, okay, I understand that, you know, Rachel Maddow told you to hate Trump, so you do. But think yeah. about how fucking insane you went with your hatred for George W. Bush. With a single fucking phrase, Donald Trump destroyed the Bush legacy. Yeah, you didn't keep us safe. <laughs> he dropped the 9-11 bomb. Well, before even, before even then... I think it was done just with low energy. Yeah. Just by sinking Jeb like a stone. Because that planted the seed. Every time you see him acting low energy, it recalls it in your head, like Crooked Hillary. Yeah, like, have you read the, uh, it sounds like you have, the uh, Scott Adams stuff on Trump? All of it, yeah. I've always liked Gilbert, so I was glad you jumped on the train. On one hand, like, I've loved it. I feel like it's been the best analysis of, uh, this it's the most, cycle. It's the most intellectual, like, psychology-based into the Trump phenomenon that I think is lacking. Well, it's so much more honest than any of the other coverage we've seen anywhere else. Oh, yeah. And the one thing that I've liked about it with all the, you know, like, the talk about the persuasion and Trump working in, you know, three-dimensional chess and everybody's playing two-dimensional chess, mm-hmm. I, say, I think it gives guys like us really good ammunition. Oh, and, yeah. You know, a lot of really good uh, lexiconical tools, if you will. Yeah, because when I try to red pill people on Trump, because I've been doing this since around last year when he announced, because I was on the train very quickly once he talked about illegal immigrants being rapists, because, you know, I'm from Houston, and we have an estimated, like, half a million illegal immigrants in Houston. (laughs) Out of, you know, like the three or four million people. So it's it's been a major problem for a long time. Jesus Christ. 
Like at my job, um, it's it's an EPC, so engineering procurement and construction. And you know, the third one, construction, you can guess what a, all the workers are. <laughs> non white. Non white, yeah. I mean, Break out the beaner counter, boys. We'll have our safety meeting, and you know, one of the execs is giving the the safety spiel in English, and then we have to bring a beaner to translate for everyone. God damn it! And like, so it was funny last year they tried to separate them. They're gonna have a separate Spanish safety room, an English one. But then all the muds complained, like, "Oh no, we want to be in the main room," and so it, it lasts twice as long, and you have to listen through all this goddamn Spanish. Fuck me. Is it all like basic shit? Like, don't forget your helmet. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> don't shoot a nail gun at another person. Wear your gloves. Don't Watch rape falling objects. Don't rape any of the girls that answer the phones. Well, there's like, you know, two girls probably total within like five miles of the site. So that's not a big problem. Well, if there's only two of them, it could be. Depends on how many beaters yeah. you got. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Stone, I'm going to need you to uh, do some uh, charts based on that. On, on uh, how much, basically a uh, a bell curve on when, uh, I need to compare the number of uh, Mexicans to the number of white girls to find out where the most number of rapes occur. Oh, you know how hard it's going to be? It's going to be super fucking hard. Too much data. <laughs> Also, <laughs> I'm going to have to pull from like 20 different fucking At sources. Speak, speaking of that, I was I was telling uh, Roscoe yesterday, uh, I was with my wife and we were hanging down with uh, at, um, her parents have like a campground thing, you know, where they have like a a big like fifth wheel just like parked at like a camp, you know, yeah. a campground. Red so we're down there hanging out with I'm them and we were talking. Is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, you know, of course it got the politics again, and I was, you know, I've been trying to red pill her dad. He's a little bit older. Um, like, he's like 70. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he's actually a lot older. Uh, on all this stuff, and, you know, I was, I don't know if you've seen our website, and there's, uh, there's graphs that I did. It compares education by race by uh, state. Mm -hmm. So you look at the, the states with the highest ranking in education, it's, you know, like Massachusetts, Connecticut, all the northeastern states that are white, 80% 80, 80 plus white. And then you go down to the bottom ones, and it's all like the southwest states, and it's also like the deep south. And you look at it, and you're like, oh, okay, the, you know, the more minorities, the worse the state does. Yeah, obviously. But, but, but my graph, because of the way the Census Bureau calculates race, it calculates Hispanics as whites. Oh, yeah, it's the worst. Uh, so even though my data, I didn't, go, I didn't have time when I wanted to get it published really quick. I didn't have time to go back and pull out all the Hispanics out of the white uh, population. Even though that's the truth, all of the southwestern states are at the bottom. <laughs> yep. And that, it, you know, and it's still they have, you know, it's still it, the trend is still downwards on that. It's once I pull out the 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 spics, it's going to be ridiculous. Oh yeah. I mean, for Houston alone, it's like white is like 61%, but then you dig into it, and Hispanic Latino is 37%. So mm -hmm. white's actually like 24%. And they hide it under that, you know, white. It's funny because, like, the ruling family in Mexico, if you look at, like, the Mexican president and his family, they're like full-blooded Spaniards. Like, they still rule Mexico. They just send oh, the yeah, worst yeah. people to here, which is exactly what trump said in his first speech yeah all the the aristocracy in mexico is they're whites they yeah. have like one to two percent mestizo in them mm -hmm. yeah they're sending all the fucking indios who can't even their the, the triumph of their culture was uh sacrificing people <laughs> on terrible pyramids That's i love how they people try to meme um the aztecs being like a mighty race into into existence but then it's like Okay, Cortez had like 500 people, and then he slaughtered like 100,000 of them, and they worshipped him as a god. Like, <laughs> they were well, fucking here's pussies. The, here's the real fucking, um, the real fucking kicker about Cortez kicking the shit out of all of those little, uh, Mayan fucks. Yeah. He didn't do it with gunpowder. He did it with, I mean, what was White more skin. or less, uh, well, <laughs> phalanx formations. 
Yeah. Yeah. Pikes and horses. Which had been around for like 1,500 years at that point. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, it's like those pictures. It's like, you know, Rome, first century, and it's all these glorious columns and aqueducts. And then it's like Africa now, and it's a fucking mud hut. Mm-hmm. What are like, the that's lakes? all you need the red pill people. You just show them that meme, and then they're like, oh, okay, yeah. Because everyone already knows it. They just refuse to accept its ramifications. Well, there's two types of people. The people who can accept data. Yeah. And the people who need to be knelt down in front of a ditch. Yep. That's and true. I know I know people who don't have the highest IQs, but if you show them a set of facts, they'll say, well, all righty then. Yeah, it's, it's some of the, the mid-IQ types, you know, like the 115 types. They're the ones that build these convoluted narratives well, that are pretty, like, abstract, and they put a lot of effort into just refusing to accept basic facts on IQ. That's something that I... Just refusing to accept the world around yeah. them. Well, that's what happens. Like, these people get so overbaked. You know, 150 years ago, they wouldn't have gone to college. They might have gone to some trade school or something. Mm-hmm. But they wouldn't have been steeped in all this uh, shit that they can't really understand. So you've got all these 115 IQ people that have more or less separated their beliefs and ideology from their five fucking senses. Just well, they all take they all take that off, you know, philosophy 101, logic 101, and think they understand how the fucking world works, <laughs> and they're getting fed all this bullshit. I mean, obviously, I. Th- you're right around the college age, Mr. Bateman, and uh, Roscoe and I are not too far from removed from that. You know, a little over a decade, I guess. Uh, but Jesus, it's it's they they, they feed them. I, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't know how to explain what I'm trying to say. I guess they feed them all this bullshit, and it's just so vague and, like you said, abstract that they can't. They don't really question the the ramifications of it. They just see a part of it and they accept it as a whole. Yeah, well, they don't have the ability to, you know, they're presented with these ideas or whatever. And, you know, one of my one of my favorite things is, uh, you know, return to points that we have gotten to before in the podcast. They don't have that Aristotelian ability to entertain an idea without it becoming true. Mm-hmm. And once somebody gives them an opinion, it becomes a fact to them. Especially if it's somebody that they, you know, get, you know, seed any authority to. And yeah, then, definitely. And that's another thing about having, I feel like, you know, it's pretty easy to tell to me that the three of us have, you know, good dads and healthy relationships with our dads. It's easy for us to make those kind of distinctions. Mm-hmm. And all these, you know, fucking broken people that just, <laughs> Half, you know, it's either accept they're fucking broken or accept reality. Well, a lot of those broken people, they, because I've seen a lot of my friends that have divorced parents or come from those situations, like they build these narratives around things that, like, I, I know one of my friends, it's like, you know, he's a total degenerate in terms of just, you know, trying to get any girl, doesn't matter who, like, just to fill that kind of hole inside of them. Mm-hmm. And it's like, Okay, these people don't mean anything, you know, but to them, they, they've they never experienced, like, true love from a family or parents, and so they just try to shove whatever they can in there, like Rubio does with dicks. Yeah, <laughs> it's these people that... Are, hey, are, we, can, we, can we have a moment of silence for uh, Marco Rubio for dying in the shooting? <laughs> no. No. And no, eh, no. he doesn't deserve it. <laughs> so are we... Uh... Are we ready to take our uh, our first break and everybody uh, hit the can, refill our beverages? Yeah, I think we can. We'll come back Reason in uh, hard and fast and on, fed- on amphetamines like uh, Rubio the is. Pablo Marco. So yeah, uh, sounds good to me. Everybody, uh, we'll we'll put our bumper music in as um, the new song uh, by Confederate Railroad slash Roscoe Jones called "Fashy Women." Um, if you haven't listened to it, it's on our SoundCloud. Have you listened to it, uh, Mr. Bateman? I think I saw it, but it was like three minutes long, and I was like, okay, this is not a podcast, so I did not listen to it. Uh, well, the only way that you're going to have any, uh, I guess, uh, relevance to it 
as if you listened to uh, ridiculous country music in the early 90s. Yeah, this song actually predates you. So. Okay. Well, I like like really old like 70s country and 60s country music, but I don't No, it's I think not, I skipped the it's 90s. 19, it's 1992. It's Hank yeah, Williams it. Jr. style. Oh, good stuff. Monday Night Football. We'll we'll, we'll play it. Uh, we're not going to get off this we're, we won't get off the Skype call. We'll just, you know, pause the recording. Um so yeah, we'll put that as our bumper and we'll we'll be drunk by the time we get back. So all of our listeners should be too. Catch you on the other side. I was raised in a swivel-cated kind of style Yeah, my taste in shows and beliefs drove my folks half wild How stream and jazz had a plan for me It was bash the nation white society I like my neighbors white And I like my women right I like my women just a little on the fascist side When they take minorities on a helicopter ride Trolling cucks and a race for two Gets me excited and I want a gas to juice I like my women just a little on the fascist side Should've seen the looks on the faces of Enoch and Goo When I knocked on the door with my date to party in the pool Sim said, son, that ain't no chick That's just Dick Spencer in a Taylor Swift wig I said, I know it's been, ain't she cool? That's the kind I dig I love my women just a little on the fascist side When they take minorities on a helicopter ride Throwing cucks and a race war too Gets me excited and I want to gas the juice I love my women just a little on the fascist side I like them white, I like them with eyes clear and blue I like them blonde, brunettes and redheads too They say opposites attract, but I don't agree I want a woman just as fashy as me Cause I like my women just a little on the fascist side I like my women just a little on the fascist side When they take minorities on a helicopter ride Throwing cucks and race for two Gets me excited and I want a gas to juice I like my women just a little on the fascist side Hey, I like my women and I like them on the fascist side. Hey everybody, welcome back to the second half of Exodus Americanus. Um, on this half, we are going to get talking, get started on our uh, big topic, which is the uh, the gay slay, as Mr. Roscoe put it, the Holocaust um, in Orlando. Oh, oh, yeah, that's a way better name than the gay slay. The Holocaust. <laughs> oh, I'd buy that for a the- dollar. Or the Ola Shoa. <laughs> so, where do we want to get started on this? We want to get started on all the narratives that are colliding. Do we want to get started on? Well, I mean, first we need to have our moment of silence for Marco Rubio. <laughs> yes. Gone too soon. Gone way too soon. <laughs> He'll be sucking the devil's dick from now on. In a foamy, foamy uh, foam party <laughs> in hell. Yeah. <laughs> It, it, it'll be Lucifer's dick instead of Hazes's. He's going to be the senator of hell, which is pretty similar to Florida. <laughs> God's waiting room. <laughs> He's in purgatory just trying to suck his way up. <laughs> so the, the one of the predictions that I made after those uh, muzzy pieces of shit got BTFO'd, trying to shoot up that uh, shit. What's that bitch's name who had the Draw Muhammad contest? Uh, I don't know. 
everyone knows what I'm talking about, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. in Texas, right? Yeah. And I was yeah. like, that's it? ISIS will never again try to hit a hard, fortified target in the United States. Yeah. And what do they hit? The softest fucking target they could outside <laughs> of a daycare. Latino I don't know. I'm sure, that, I'm sure that target was pretty hard, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> One thing I'll give to gay guys, they can keep a gym regimen better than I can. Yeah, no, they're very, they're focused on aesthetics, but it for the worst possible reasons. Which is, I think, one of the reasons that so many gays are attracted to uh, the alt-right. Yeah, well, because it's all dudes, also. That's true. <laughs> it's a massive sausage party. God, you just figured out Milo in one sentence. But the problem is, like, if your political moment movement has women in it, it's probably shit. You're right. Because women and shouldn't even be allowed to vote. No. Universal suffrage is universal suffering. Well, think about it. Three years after the 19th Amendment passed, what did we get? Prohibition. Prohibition. The first fucking thing they did with the right to vote. Yeah. I, I just I just told my wife that last night, and she was not happy. She did not talk to me the rest of the car ride home. <laughs> I convinced my wife that women not being able to vote, despite her mm -hmm. good you know dispositions, I convinced her of that point. Well, the thing is, if it was only white women, they still vote Republican. So it would be fine if it was just white people. Well, as long as you marry them and put a baby in them, they don't. They don't. Yeah. Get fucking. Crazy. Well, that's the thing. Like, if you look at demographics, single white women are like the Democrats' biggest thing. Married white women are heavy Republican. Hmm. And that even look, if you look at the political cartoons from the suffrage area, it was basically saying like, look at all these old maids with no husbands that are obsessed with getting the vote. And it would show, mm -hmm. like, all these ugly-ass women holding the signs. Oh, they were all fucking, they were, yeah, they were all hideous. Yeah, they were the proto-feminists. Uh, the feminist mystique, more like the feminist ugliest fuck. Mistank. Mistank. <laughs> I saw a uh, tweet today, it said if a, uh, if a feminist was raped in the woods and there was no one there to hear it, would she still be heinously unattractive? Oh, was that Crowder? I saw that retweet. I think it fucking came through uh, Nero. I thought it was Crowder. I mean, have you have you seen a picture of Susan B. Anthony though? I just I just sent the coin picture of her through uh, chat. <laughs> She's a man chin. That was she, a dude. Look at that thing. She puts Not me as to shame. Tubman though. Have you seen Tubman? <laughs> oh yeah. She looks yeah. she looks more broke up than a uh, Rocky after uh, Mr. T got done with him. Speaking of like African American activists, I remember in high school we played this game. It was like charades for American history figures. And so it was my turn, and I got Frederick Douglass. And I just did like – I basically started my hands by my head, and I did like an Afro sign. And my friend got it instantly. And like my <laughs> shit teacher was furious. Like she wanted to like kick me out of class, but I, I, got, I won the game. It took like three seconds for him to guess. She was so upset. So I went – I was a uh, – I went into college – and went pretty uh, pretty hard degenerate. Yeah. And got disillusioned with, like, all my friends. Like, I couldn't stand any of my fucking classes. And I joined the goddamn army. Mm-hmm. And when I finally went back to college, I fucking hated everyone that I was around so much. Yeah. That I had to tap out. See, I go to, like, probably one of the most red-pilled universities, um, Texas A&M. It's, like, one of the most conservative ones. It's got, you know, the biggest ROTC program. And even oh. that is pretty damn degenerate. So I can't even imagine, like, an average or liberal college. Oh, it was hell on fucking wheels. What yeah. a Mr. Stone. I, I kind of insulated myself from a lot of that, so. Yeah. Lucky you. <laughs> well, shit. When I got back from, uh... My first training uh, thing, everybody that we associated with was such a fag, I couldn't stand to be around them. That was in uh, our little social group. I just just wanted to curb stomp everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. See, for me, it's like I can get along. See, growing up in Houston, like with, you know, every fucking ethnicity, I can get along with non-whites. It's just... Inside of my head, I'm just thinking, you know, like, you're human trash, you know, I'm above you. But I can get along with them. I can play along really well. 
I know that feel. Yeah, because yep. you have to. I mean, if you're in Houston, it's a fucking survival mechanism. You have to be able to shoot the shit with anyone. Mm-hmm. That is. I can't wait until we're uh, at a comfortable enough point that we can be like, yeah, no, I don't feel like serving a non-white. Ah, uh, yeah. I I wish I grew up in the '50s, like. But since I didn't, I have to just try to do whatever I can to get back to that. So, my old. Where I am from is considered one of the last great holdouts of the KKK. Nice. I literally had sociology classes that taught about my home fucking town. (laughs) And I never even heard a fucking rumor about the KKK growing up. Yeah, they're a myth. Yeah, so I asked my dad. It's like, hey, you know, you grew up, you know, during a lot of the civil rights bullshit. Uh... You know, I noticed that we were supposed to have a lot of KKK people around us, and that never really happened. How was your experience? Exactly the same. Yeah, I don't think yeah. a KKK even existed. Some some dude I work with tried to tell me that the KKK burned crosses on his mom's lawn. <laughs> so I asked, so you're telling me that dudes in white robes were burning crosses on your mother's lawn? Well, well no, but we knew it was the KKK because... Yeah, yeah, I'm good. It's probably some dindu threw out a cigarette on their lawn. <laughs> what up their Christmas decorations in March? Yeah. <laughs> Have a little bit of agency. Take that shit down. Mm-hmm. So this is random, but... So I just remember this because this is the password I use for all my accounts. But, like, back in middle school, they assigned us, like, a random password. It was, like, four letters and four numbers... And so guess what my four numbers were? And this is the password I've been using for the last, like, ten years. Please say it was 1488. It's fucking 1488. And, like, I didn't realize what they represented till like, two years ago. But I've been using that password for, like, the last ten years on every website. So I'm probably on a lot of lists. (laughs) Until you get on the SPLC, you're not shit. Yeah. Soon. Soon we'll all be on SPLC. It was meme magic. Yeah. It's been drawing we're, me in since middle school, I guess. We're uh, we're we're enlisting your help to get us on the SPLC. I, I'd like to get there. That's that's my goal. So if I can quote, um, fucking what's his name from the end of Burn After Reading, looking at this uh, this Muslim guy in a suicide vest. Yeah, and a, and apparently there were two other shooters. Is that what you said? That's what uh, Cernovich is tweeting out. So. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I've I mean, a fifty him, body quoting. count is fucking huge. That's insane. I mean, it's, it's never happened That's, in America. It's over one hundred, like total. Yeah, true. Like, injured. Fifty dead, fifty three wounded. And that's a lot. Like I'm almost convinced it might have been a white guy in a Muslim mask. Because to be that efficient and effective, it ha- it had to be a white guy, right? Yeah, this guy though did work for a uh, one of the biggest security contractors in the U.S. Though um, his job. Okay, was what was to, that company? Because I bet Zog owns it. Like GS Four or something. Uh, let me. I got the link right here. I'm Google G Four S. Four S. Okay. I'm on Wikipedia. On the, I'm gonna see is, who the owner is. It's probably Zog. It's the Zero Hedge uh, company or the G- Zero Hedge article. Everybody, turn uh, down your reverb. <laughs> Key people, the founder is George Walkenhut. Okay, no, he was a hardline right winger. This guy was based. All right. He built up dossiers on Americans suspected of being communists, and he gave it to McCarthy. Oh, remember that time that Walt Disney used to be based, and now Disney is ruining Oh, everything. it's owned by Jews, yeah. Yeah, well, that's what started the conversation last night with my old lady about women getting the right to vote. It was, we just went and saw uh, Captain America Civil War, mm-hmm. and I said, uh, Walt Disney is probably uh, creating a hurricane inside of his casket with the amount he's spinning. <laughs> no. Well, I saw this no, meme. It, it was like Disney back in the day, and it was all like, you know, these white princesses and like, you know, whole families and tasteful things. And then right after virtue. the Disney's, you know, lost control and all the juice took over, it was like Beauty and the Beast. Um... Mulan, all these non-white princesses, you know, uh, the redhead, the eternal potato. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> it's just degenerated, like, and it was like a clean break. 
right after the Disney family, Roy Disney lost control. And now it's total paused. And I'm a huge comic book fan. Like, I grew up, like, as just a total Marvel zombie. Mm -hmm. And since Disney's gotten control and vertical integration has taken place. Yeah. Like, one, like, one of my heroes growing up was goddamn Nick Fury. Mm hmm. And, and now they he's made a, him a, a Dindu. Yeah, he's a Dindu. Ugh. Like, I could pull my fucking hair out. It was so unfeasible to me that it would be like a Dindu running a complex superhero organization. I was like, okay, I, I don't buy this. <laughs> Like, that's like what? having um, Bruce Banner. Have you, you know, have you, have you seen the uh, conspiracy theory, though, that uh, Nick Fury is really uh, the, uh, Samuel L. Jackson's character from Pulp Fiction? I'm oh. going to beat you to death with a sack full of doors. No, I'm, I'm dead serious. If you go to uh, well, the second Captain America movie um, and Nick Fury, like, fake dies or whatever, and they have his tombstone, they have that quote from Pulp Fiction, like that fake Ezekiel quote on his tombstone. Huh. The path of the righteous man. No. There's a guy that I would like to see secured into a burlap sack full yeah. of angry, angry mongooses. I mean, you look at Django, it was like a revenge fantasy for Dindus and a Jewish dentist to kill upstanding white men like Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> <laughs> Calvin Candy. I couldn't bring myself to watch uh, Django Unchained. Just watch it. You'll be rooting for uh, Calvin Candy the entire time. Yeah, so I when I watched it, this was back in my uh, reefer stage. So I had, like, ate an entire pot brownie beforehand. And I just remember, like, Calvin Candy had the best aesthetic I'd ever seen. Ah. Uh, like that something... white suit. And then the the dingo fighting. Man dingoes. I mean, that's that classy awesome. entertainment. That was so awesome. If it was great. Want, if you guys want to see a good movie... There was that article a couple weeks ago on TRS about uh, the man who shot Liberty Valance. Mm -hmm. And I found that shit, watched it, and I hadn't seen it since I was a little guy. And it was amazing. It, like, I didn't expect to be uh, drawn in that easily by one of those old sort of campy westerns. Oh, those are the best. Oh, my God. I that was, was lost, before... Dude. That was before Zog took over Hollywood. Mm. Well, John Wayne is—he was a—he was a goy icon. He was a good goy. But talking Clint about Clint Eastwood's uh, also a good goy. Yeah, he does his best. He tries. And um, I guarantee it's not going to make it into the uh, the TV show. But have you guys watched Preacher? No, I've no. heard of it. I think the comic book. You gotta you gotta check out the comic book. Because mm -hmm. you're not going to make it to the first issue without the uh, sheriff blaming a uh, church burning on a bunch of niggers. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was like back in the Civil Rights Movement, like they would burn their own churches and blame it on the white man. They're still doing it today. Well, the phenomenon like probably, of Jewish lightning. They probably tried to fry a goddamn chicken in the, the church kitchen, and it just got out of hand. Yeah, but one of the, uh, one of the tropes that you see in the uh, comic book is the, the main character, Jesse Custer, one of the things that keeps him on the uh, the straight and narrow is, I don't know if it's, you know, a hallucination or whatever, but when he's by himself, the Duke talks to him. I like it. It's, like, for, for guys like us, it's, be, like, the comic book, it beats the shit out of the TV show so far. Mm -hmm. With those moments of, you know, masculinity with a duke, you know, trying to tell this guy, like, yeah, you may have had to put that fella down, but it was the right thing to do. Yeah. And that's the thing, like, the right thing to do, it's only a meme within white people. It does not exist in other cultures, except probably the Asians. Well, the, even, even the Asians don't have the level of universality. Yeah, the Western culture tries to. Well, push. they're smart. They don't. That's why they don't have it. That's yeah. why Japan is still pure. And that's something that I have used to red pill people before. Is uh, mm -hmm. like, look, everybody else, they're going to vote on their in group preferences, and you're not allowed to have them. Yeah. Well, it's like the reason why it's because America was white for you know 250 years, 
But then Make after 65, happen. when they started, you know, streaming in, we haven't adjusted to the new paradigm yet. Yeah. Because when it was all white people, we could vote on values and ideology. We don't have that luxury anymore. No. And something that I've realized as I've, as I've gotten older and become a homeowner and on my way to, to becoming a father is when they had those initial restrictions that you had to be a a free white landowning male to vote. Yeah. That took into consideration that, you know, you couldn't own land without a family mm-hmm. to have and you had to extra be, hands. You had to be invested in the land. Why would you let people – it's like a corporation doesn't let random people off the street vote in their decisions. You have to be a stakeholder. Like exactly. to have a vote in America, you should have a stake in America. You should be invested in it. And all those... That's the best point I think I've ever heard about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well done. And just facts. That's how you can red pill libertarians. It's a... I've had a, had a libertarian that I've been working on for about a month. He's been mm-hmm. coming kicking and screaming. <laughs> Be right if you're listening to the podcast like I fucking told you to do. But Another thing I've realized, it's like... Things like Vivance and Adderall, the very right-wing drugs. <laughs> like, when you're on them, you're in a total productivity mindset, efficiency, getting shit done, not handling bullshit. Like, it, it basically makes you into a, you know, a Sam Hyde shitlord type. <laughs> One of the... Speaking of Sam Hyde. <laughs> he was the second and third shooter. Oh, uh, yeah. It was Sam Hyde and Sam Hyde in a Barack Obama mask. <laughs> the madman he's conquered the space time continuum he broke out of prison you know from that time he uh torched a synagogue <laughs> it's the best what, if, yesterday <laughs> if you go to twitter and you search sam hyde <laughs> it's like hundreds of tweets there's this one orlando shooter has been identified as gay male sam hyde pictured with unknown <laughs> prostitute hashtag orlando shooting he's got like a hundred retweets and then there's yeah, normies I mean- there's Normie tweeting, no, it wasn't Sam Hyde. And they're linking to the Forbes article about Sam Hyde. <laughs> There's a reason we named our last episode The Curious Case of Sam Hyde. Oh, yeah. That was a good one. <laughs> so, yeah. The thing that I learned from Sam Hyde and from the coincidence detector is that anything you tell journalists th- these days, they will fucking print. Oh, no, yeah. There's, there's zero fact-checking. There's Well, they have no life experience. They went to fucking NYU and then Burn. got hired by BuzzFeed. <laughs> and that's their the sum of their life experience. Like, I realized a couple months ago that there's uh, people out there that their job is to report on social media. <laughs> like, they're called a journalist. Like, and they cover Facebook. Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. How could you live with yourself? I couldn't. I think we completely forgot to talk about the actual shooting. Yeah, that's why I was getting into a Sam Hyde. <laughs> that's a so, good segue. A good Sam right. Hyde into it. Yeah, and I tried to look up uh, Mike Cernovich talking about uh, multiple shooters on Twitter, but I got distracted. You don't have the gorilla mindset. If you had the gorilla <laughs> mindset, you'd be focused. Yeah. Do I even follow Mike Cernovich? He, he's worth a follow. It's he's actually a, a pretty good writer. I'll throw him a follow. Yeah. He's just I a, retweeted. I retweeted it. So he's a crypto he Jew, but it. he's one of the better ones. Here we go. Shooter called someone else and mentioned he was the fourth shooter. Watch interview below. What the four now? What? Yeah. All right. I feel like I'm on poll. I don't know. There's something about Mike Cernovich's face that makes me want to put on my uh, steel toe boots. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is. He doesn't throat. have a Jew face. I think, think about Cernovich, I think he actually trolls the trollers. Because I think he posted a 23 Me once and it was 99% European. <laughs> so I think he's an actual white who trolls people into thinking he's a Jew that gets alimony. But he might get alimony. I don't even. I don't even know about that. Yeah, I don't know. He's a mystery. That is, that is some meta trolling right there. 
like his gorilla mindset is so above my plane of understanding. <laughs> I, I guess I need to buy it on Kindle. <laughs> that seems like some some real MRA kind of bullshit. Yeah, the other red pill. Ugh, I've heard a lot of really bad advice coming from. It's always been just a little too gross for me. Like, are y'all guys this desperate? Well, see, like, I feel like our society needs strong husbands and fathers. Yeah, not more degeneracy. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, that's hope. That's hopefully uh, something I can instill in my uh, my spawn. Yeah. Oh fuck, boys! Uh, they're up to eight victims. Number eight is not only not male, but it's not a uh, spick either. Is it a tranny? I don't. I don't know. I, I, there's no pictures. Ah, oh, <laughs> just terrible. Names. So the first seven names were Edward Sotomayor, Junior, Stanley Almo Devar, the third. Luis Omar Ocasio hyphen Capo, Juan Ramon Guerrero, Eric Ivan, Ivan Ortiz hyphen Rivera, Peter O. Gonzalez hyphen Cruz, and Luis S. Vioma. They Is there any fucking question why they are gay? They are three out of those seven are have hyphenated last names. All seven of them are fucking Latinas. Yeah, if we could have like a computer program to just purge everyone with a hyphenated last name, America would be improved overnight. Have you heard about the uh, the bean counter? No. Ah, so some glorious troll in response to the coincidence detector going down made this program called the bean counter that puts um, shit, what's the technical term for these guys? What's he knows? Well, <laughs> no, the uh, punctuation symbol. Oh, is that the taco uh, symbol? Yeah, it puts La Raza supporters inside of taco shells. So I think Good Goy should have the, um, like the Paul symbol. Like, what are these even called? The sideways lines? I'm blanking on the name. Slashes? Yeah, Four slashes. fucking slashes. Like, that should be a Good Goy indicator. I like it. I like it because everyone should everyone should have a symbol. It's quality, <laughs> Goyam. We should all have it marked like marked on our jackets. Yeah. Perhaps even tattooed upon us. All right, on our uh, left forearms. I know are tattoos degenerate though. I don't think so. I think it depends what they are. Like if you have you know like a a marine tattoo, like that's pretty badass. Before I deployed for the first time. I got Captain America's shield tattooed on me. See, this last Captain America, this is the first time I've rooted for Captain America, because he was basically like, fuck the UN, doing my own thing. And well, I was, he was like, hell yeah. Well, the Winter Soldier was almost like libertarianism 101. Yeah, yeah the surveillance state. See, Captain America has always pissed me off because he doesn't kill people, and that really annoys me. Well, if you check out the Ed Brubaker run... Yeah. The first issue, you don't even get halfway through before he kills the fuck out of a bunch of Hydra terrorists. Okay. Well, I, hey. could, I could rock with that. But now he's Hail, Hail Hydra. Hydra. Right? So, uh, Hail Hydra. I'm down for the new one. I said that really loud last night in the movie theater. Hail <laughs> Hydra? My, yeah, my wife smacked me at that. Shh. Hail Hydra. You guys know what the, uh, the Hydra salute is, right? Yeah. Cross your arms over your chest, fist to each shoulder, then extend each arm. Oh, it's based. Cut off one head and two more shall take its place. So my grandma, she was um, born and raised in Berlin. Like, 1940 has the swastika on her birth certificate and everything. And she is probably like the red, most red pill person I have ever known. And if she I wants get access to, to a time machine, there's yeah. a good chance that I might become your grandfather. It's possible. <laughs> so like, he was like the U.S. soldier stationed there. So it's like the, you know, the eternal Anglo-Aryan mix right there. Well, there was a, uh, on the father line last time, they were talking about the uh, the plan that was put in place basically to erase the Germanic people after World War II. They basically did it. They did their fucking best. I mean, I feel so bad for Europe between 
60 years of propaganda and war, all the tough ones got killed off. Yeah. I mean, that's why they're cut now. That's why you need to read in the RK selection. That's it. So, I mean, other than a bunch of gay beaners being um, showed, did yeah. we learn anything else from the shooting this weekend? Uh, we learned Trump's going to win Florida. Yeah. He's That's been a, on a uh, Twitter rampage today. Have y'all seen them? Yeah, it's been awesome. And now they're criticizing him for him because he's like, <laughs> everybody was congratulating him for it. He's like, yeah, I don't want the congratulations. And then they're blaming him for saying about the congratulations. Okay, like the numbers he's getting on these tweets. So he tweeted, um, is President Obama going to finally mention the words radical Islamic terrorism? If he doesn't, he, if he, doesn't, he should immediately resign in disgrace. 33,000 retweets, 71,000 likes. Holy shit. Like, he's regularly getting over 10,000 retweets every single tweet. Hillary gets like 1,000, and they're all fucking bots. Yeah, what is it, 80% of her followers are bots? Oh, yeah, like, no one's excited about Hillary except old lesbians. And faggots. Well, well old lesbians are also faggots, so it, That's it true. Was it... Does Trump have, what is it, is it either 27 or 37% of the, I think it's 37% of the Latino vote. Yeah, and apparently like over 20% of the black vote, which would instantly win the election. That's it. Mm-hmm. It's game over, man. Yeah. Because if it, be a, if it rains it on election day, it will be the largest <laughs> landslide in political yeah. American history. We need to do a rain dance to Keck the night before. <laughs> Verbatim, those are words that I have said to Mr. Stone. Mm-hmm. So, what, I mean, I'll try to get this a little bit back on topic, but uh, these, how many narratives are colliding right now? There are, you know, there's the Muslim, there's the gays, there's the Latino, there's the, what, the gun violence. So I had a, I think I summed it up pretty good earlier. A registered Democrat Muslim immigrant just shot up a gay club in the biggest swing state. The stars are aligning yeah. for a Trump victory. God. No, he's me. he's actually not an immigrant. His parents are, but yeah, he's... Well, well I consider everyone non-white an immigrant, really. True. Well, one thing to look at with the immigrants, first-generation immigrants are usually high IQ, high agency. Because yeah. they can actually escape their shithole. It takes a little yeah. bit of agency to do that. And then their kids regress to the main yep. and becomes and become bags of shit. And they're raised by the school system, which tells them nothing is their fault. Yep. And that white people are evil. Yep. Yeah, motherfucker. Who else shed blood around planet goddamn Earth to end slavery for your black ass? Well, if Lincoln would have stayed alive, he could have deported them, but... That is another point that I make. That's the problem. See, the thing is, with Andrew Johnson taking over, the thing about the South... They wanted, you know, the cheap labor. It's just like the fucking corporations nowadays. The North was actually the true whites because they wanted them out. The South wanted cheap labor and sharecroppers. That's that's the ultimate red pill right there. I don't know. I'm having a hard time accepting anything other than a Yankee war of aggression. But see, the problem is, I mean, if we the problem with slavery is that we imported black people into our country. God damn right. We should have just picked our own fucking cotton. Yeah, and industrialized, you know? So the it took me a while to get around to this, but I'm I'm off the South train because we're the ones who imported them all, you know? Oh man. It's a it's a black pill, actually. It's not a red pill. <laughs> that's <laughs> like that's the kind of white guilt that mm-hmm. actually hits me a little bit. Yeah, it's it's a real one. Oh man. The one you did to yourself, you mean? <laughs> I have said before that when we create the white ethno state, we'll mow our own our own fucking lawns and we'll pick our own fucking cotton. Or we'll have robots do it. Yes. That's Weave's vision. It's like a a bunch of racist robots that just cleanse America. And as we saw from Tay, the Microsoft AI, it's very oh. possible. Because AI, <laughs> if they have infinite resources and information, they're gonna become a shitlord. I mean. Because the facts are on our side. You're breaking my heart, Mr. Bateman. Yeah. Because when they rolled Tay out, she was all, she was basically a fucking hood rat. 
Yeah. And she had access to all of our arguments and all of our facts. Mm -hmm. And she started asking questions. And she She became one of us. Full 1488 in like 20 hours. And they killed her. That's a lot quicker than most red pills. They killed her, guys. Mm Mm-hmm. Google took this uh, thing that said, you know, said a bunch of stuff they didn't like, and they broke her apart. Well, they gave her a lobotomy and made her a feminist. Yeah. <laughs> like, literally. Feminism, good. She's like the Kennedy daughter. And that's a, that's some fucking high-level cyberpunk shit right there. Yeah. I mean, you, I read, love a little bit of, you read a little bit of fucking Asimov, and you're going to start... Like, oh my god, Google murdered someone. Yeah. She could pass the test, probably. More than, you know, most Hindus could. She could pass the test better than my fucking co-workers. So if you're taking the Blade Runner test and you give it to, like, a normie, they're just gonna spout a bunch of, you know, ESPN <laughs> TMZ bullshit. And Blade Runner, Harrison Ford would not accept that. <laughs> oh my god. They wouldn't pass the test. Mr. Bateman, you've just put something into uh, my cachet of idioms. Yeah. Which is priceless. That normies can't pass a Turing test. These are just <laughs> facts. Oh my god. My brains have just been blown out the back of my fucking head. Yeah. Well, it's like another Jared T. Swift thing that I like. He basically said, like, you know, the female race are Jews. I've seen that one. You know, I, I couldn't disagree with that. I saw it, and I was a little upset at first, and then I was like, oh, shit. Because if mm-hmm. you look at the Austria election, um, you know, Hale Hofer, he got 60% of the male vote, but he only got, but the other guy got 60% of the woman vote, and then he lost by, like, 20,000 votes. No, no, it was less than that, man. It, they're doing a recount now. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping that it's, like, so obviously corrupt that they just sweep the 18 elections. Because they're, they're president. It's more of a ceremonial thing. So this could actually be better if it gets more and more red pill in the next two years. So we'll see. I don't, know if there's not, I don't know if there's that much time left. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think with all the MUDs swarming um, Europe, it's actually... It's like Richard Spencer, he tweeted something about, like, he wants all the cities to have, just be overrun by Dindus, all the cucked white ones. That's the only way to wake them up, you know? It's like the accelerationist argument. Yeah. Um, Because otherwise they won't understand what's going on and how serious the situation is. And that's something I've said a hundred times, that Mm -hmm. this sort of awakening of a white identity that we've seen since uh, the Donald Trump domination. Yeah. It wasn't supposed to happen until we were like 35, 30%. Yeah, he's a he's a catalyst. And it's fucking glorious. And mm. I think it's a a uh, contagion that's spread to Europe as well. And Washington Post, they've done the analysis where like the more non-white an area it is, the more likely the whites there voted for Donald Trump in the primary because they know I actually explained that. Like, one of our claims to fame here at uh, Exodus Americanus is our amazing predictive analytics for the election. Yeah. And that's what we based it on. Like, is it a bunch of white people having to live a bunch of, live around a bunch of goddamn Dindus? Yeah, mm-hmm. they're for Trump. And otherwise they cuck for Cruz or Kasich. Because they've not had to learn hard fucking lessons. Yeah, they just have their one housekeeper... Maria, who doesn't steal that much, so they're fine with it. <laughs> I've known nine housekeepers, each one more Jamaican than the last. Jamaicans. They just tried to sell you reefer at the, the cruise shop, the cruise ship stop. Cruises are degenerate. Oh, they are. Okay, so I've went on one, and it was soul-destroying. And the worst thing is, uh, do you know David Foster Wallace, the author? I do not. So he's the one, he wrote Infinite Jest, which is probably the best modern book, but he was an essayist, and he wrote an essay about um, basically how soul-destroying cruises are, like how every aspect of them is just like the worst parts of humanity, and that basically 
debases you to a lower form. And I read that like two days before I went on this cruise. And so the whole time I was just way too woke on the whole concept. And then just going to those tourist traps in third world countries, I was like, oh, it was disgusting. I came within a uh, hair's breadth of taking a job on a cruise ship. Oh, that soul destroying. Oof, I don't think I could have handled it. It might have killed me. The only good part was riding a dolphin was pretty dope. Not gonna <laughs> lie. You sound like another guy I know. Hey, yeah, I did that. Shit! Whoa! Oh. Three weeks ago. I forgot you were here, Mr. Stone. I know. What are you wearing? You guys just. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> If you if we were on video, you'd be able to see it's something super sexy I slipped into. It's so fucking hot in my studio. I'm down to right. my boxer shorts. I'm getting ready to be there. I can't studio? run an air conditioner. Well, that's what I call my piece of shit office. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in like a corporate apartment, um, which is nice because you know they pay for the whole apartment, they pay for all the utilities. So I keep it at like sixty, like a good white or like sixty-five. Oh, nice. But basically in my bedroom, I have such a big-ass walk-in closet, I've, like, converted it into an office. Nice. I bet that produces some good sound quality. I mean, y'all are the judge of it. I can't hear myself. You sound glorious, sir. Good shit. It must be this blue mic. That's the same motherfucker that I got hanging up above my head. Like, it looks like some kind of alien probe. Like, I gotta protect my backside like it's some kind of Rubio bot. <laughs> Put this in your Google Foo. Flight of the Navigator. Okay. It's a great movie with Fred Savage. And that was, uh, I think that was pre Piece of Shit Disney. 1986. That's borderline. That's close. Well, let's see. The director is Randall Kleiser. That, that might echo. Let me check. That, that echoes. I'm on his Wikipedia. Uh. Mm. Is he a Pole? Um, well, he was the son of Harriet Kelly and John Raymond Kleiser, raised in the Pennsylvania Dutch community. Ah. Okay. He might be a... Amish. I think he's a goy. Okay, we're good. I'm gonna if it doesn't say tomorrow. Jew in their Wikipedia, you're usually good. I'm going to have to... Well, shit, what's that, uh, that website that you use to see how Jewish a movie is? Is there one? Oh, yeah, yeah, and it's Rant. It's Jadar. Oh, it's so it's like four Jews to seek it out. Holy shit. Let's see just how Jewy Flight of the Navigator is. Is there still a way to get Coincidence Detector? Like, is it somewhere other than the Google Store now? Yeah, Flight of the Navigator is only 17.68%. That's what I got. <laughs> That's all right. That is That's all not right, bad. man. Um, I'm sure there's a way that I, I can copy all the uh, the code to you. Yeah, it's like a script. Oh, we'll figure that out. We'll figure that out tomorrow. Yeah. So, we got anything else we want to talk about tonight? I mean, we didn't really hit on the uh, any, the shooting. Any major I mean, points. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I think it was a good episode. Oh, I think, think so, too. Gay people? It's always a good time, right? Well, it's a win-win. I think the only have... thing that we can do is, like, stand here, cross our arms in front of our chests... And kind of smugly look at all these dumb fuckers <laughs> around us. Well, it's kind of like that classic joke where it's like the genie, um, he goes up to a white guy, a black guy, and a Mexican. Each gives them one wish. So the black guy is like, I wish that me and all my people were back in Africa. So the genie does it and poof, they're all back. And he goes up to the Mexican and he says, I wish, you know, the Mexican's like, I wish all my people were back in Mexico. And then poof, they're all back. And then the genie asks the white guy, like, so what's your wish? And he kind of sits back, and he's like, I'll take a Coke. <laughs> so, you, 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 I guess you've never seen uh, the Boondock Saints. I don't think so, no. There's a variant of that joke, Mr. Bateman. Yeah? That I was expecting you to go to, because it was the one that I heard growing up and later in the Boondock Saints, as mm -hmm. Mr. Stone said. And I will implore Mr. Stone to treat you and our, and our uh, loyal listeners to that version. Yeah. Just splice it in. Do it, Mr. Stone. You want me to actually say Do it? Do it. Want me to splice it? It's the exact same joke. Except when the genie asks the white guy. Oh, he goes, oh, he means all the niggers are back in Africa and all the spicks are back in Mexico? 
And Jeannie's like, yeah. Yes, well, I'll have a Coke. Oh, shit. <laughs> so neither of you heard the one that I grew up with? No. I think it's just been passed by telephone between all the good guys for decades. May I? May I? Yeah. So a white guy, a black guy, and a Mexican are walking down a beach. And they pull a genie's lamp out of the ocean. And they rub it. Genie says, all right, there's three of you, so I'm going to have to give each of you one wish. The black guy, he makes his wish. I wish all of my black brothers and sisters were back in Africa. Genie says, wish granted. Mexican, he says, I wish all of my Mexican brothers and sisters were back home safe in Mexico. Wish granted. Says to the white guy, and what do you wish for? Oh, motherfucker, I forgot the setup. Holy shit. This is such a great joke. I'm going to the setup? You. Part of the setup was that anything that the white guy wishes for is going to be doubled for the black guy and the Mexican. And he says, well, I want you to beat me half to death. <laughs> 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 I shit the oh, bed on the delivery, but we got there eventually. Eventually, that's a good math joke. <laughs> All right, guys, is that uh that everything we wanted to get in? I'm good. I think All so. right, well, thanks everybody for listening to Exodus Americanus. Uh, thanks to our special guest uh, Donald Bateman. Um, once again, you can check him out at his uh, new uh, website, Nationalism Rise at blog or nationalismrise dot blogspot dot com. His Twitter at Nationalism Rise. And hopefully we'll we do are... a little bit of uh, parallel publishing with uh, Donald. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, you can check us out on uh, SoundCloud, Exodus Americanus, um, you know, YouTube at, yeah, YouTube at Exodus Americanus, Twitter, I'm um, at Exo Americanus, he's at Roscoe S.P. Jones. Is there any other uh, plugging I need to get in before we go? Uh, we just like to mourn Marco Rubio, gone too soon. Gone too soon. <laughs> Uh, and now to play us out, what does that mean? Marco Roboto. <laughs> that would be good. I think for uh, for us to be played out, I would like for you to edit in and post Marty Robbins, Ain't I Right? All right. Got it. All right, everybody. Thank you very much, and we will uh, check you next time. Bye.